um, this morning we are going to be talking about design and um, that is one of the important things in the tiny house journey and um, hopefully we'll also get to answer some questions in the chat so I am going to give it like I said a few minutes and hopefully allow some others to join before I get started and if not I'm going to go ahead and kick it off and and then folks can catch up they might still be trying to catch up on their sleep this morning. All right, good morning. All right, good morning. Okay, well, I'm going to kick it off. It's a minute after, so everybody can get to their day. Um, this is Creating Home, a tiny house series. This is the what's your question portion of the Creating Home series. The um, other portion is conversations on intimate spaces and I am alternating Sundays. So every other Sunday we are either in conversation or I am answering a frequently asked question. Um, my name is Jewel Pearson. This is, again, um, creating home. Um, I built my tiny house in 2015, and I consider it a, a kind of fancy tiny house. Um, and since that time, I have been sharing my journey um, to hopefully inspire others in the movement, to um, help others who might be interested in the movement um, see that it's possible and hopefully inspire them along their journey. Um, I offer coaching, um, I offer consultations and workshops, again, to help others achieve their tiny house journey. Um, it is my goal to build literal and figurative community that is accessible and available, and also along the way, serve up a lot of representation, and that is very important to me um, so that everyone can see themselves in this movement. Good morning, I see some other people joining. Thank you so much for joining this morning um, or afternoon as I always have to remind myself it is noon um, on my time. Oh, thank you, good morning, Linda, thank you so much. Um, so let's get started um, again and I, I am trying to work all of my um, technology over here. This is again, the what's your question portion of Creating Home, a tiny house series where I answer um, a question that is asked of me to hopefully help somebody uh, along the way as they're also navigating their journey. Um, I spend this time on Sundays answering those questions and hopefully answering a couple of questions that we might have um, in the chat. So I thank you all for joining and hopefully this is a way that um, you can figure out your journey and help you move along the way. So this morning, we are going to be talking about design. And you all should be impressed that I'm moving myself around the screen. I am figuring out this technology, um, this system. I love it so far. It's kind of easy. It makes it look like I've got a whole um, technology team helping me figure this out. Um, but this is, again, how do I figure out design? And this is... Um, as you think about it, as you talk about it, this is design of your tiny house is one of the big major decisions along the way in the process. It is one of the decisions that I tell people they should spend a lot of time, um, good morning, they should spend a lot of time in this section um, of design and figuring out design, um, especially if your tiny house journey is a long-term plan. Um, for someone who is maybe just planning to live in a tiny house for a short period of time because maybe they are trying to save their money and they um, want to, you know, build a larger house. And so the tiny house is just an, an intermediate um, solution. They might not spend as much time in this process, but for someone, and this was my um, plan is, you know, my, my tiny house journey, I've, uh, my tiny house, I've always said, is my retirement plan. So um, design was a big piece of 
of my planning. And this is um, something that I suggest, um, again, that it's one of the things that kind of contributes to longevity in your house. If you're not going to um, spend the time in design, you might find later on that you don't enjoy your house. There's some things that you wish you had done differently. And that always kind of leads to someone um, not feeling like they're comfortable in their home and it might not be something that they're able to continue with. So for me, um, this year marks seven years that I have been in my tiny house. Um, and I did, I did just add space, but even before I added space, I'd always share that my design was one of the things that I was really satisfied with. And again, it was something that I spent a lot of time um, in advance of building to, to figure out. And so if um, here's my slide and um, one of the thing, and again, this is um, high level basics. I'm not going into all of the details of design. Good morning. Um, but one of the things that I'll say um, is that the first thing that you have to do here is to really know yourself um, in overall know yourself. If you're the only person in the house or if you're, you're going to have your family, kids, you need to pay attention to knowing yourself, the need, your needs, the needs of everyone that the house that will be in the tiny house. If you are going to um, grow your family, potentially, you also need to be thinking about the potential for growth, what that looks like um, in in your design. Um, and as far as knowing yourself, when I speak to that, I say um, I'm saying what makes home for you? What is important for you in your home? Um, and if you're kind of younger and starting out in your in your journey, and this is maybe your first home, you may not know all of those things. But for someone that's that's older like I am, um, there's so many things that I figured out along my journey that make home for me. And so part of those things are they might be pieces that I want to include or wanted to include in my design or routines and habits that you might have that are important to you. So those are the things that when I'm speaking of knowing yourself, those are the things that you should be thinking about um, as you're going to, um, as you're thinking about designing your tiny house. And so when I talk about that, I say to people that you should start making a list. And so in your list, the must haves for you that you have to have in your design, the things that make home for you, making a list of your must haves, making a list. And within that list, you want to organize it with um, must haves, nice to haves, and then the wish list. And I think this list is important to have before you even get into the build process. Um, so I always say prepare this list in advance because as you start getting into the building, if you have to adjust your budget and things have to be cut out, you want to be able to make your decisions on what you might be eliminating or your changes based on this list um, of must haves, nice to have and wish list. So if it's something that you know you have to have um, and you've already got it on your list as you are in the build and maybe it's a, a stressful time and the budget isn't working out and I can, I'm speaking to this from experience, you don't want to make decisions and cut something out that was on the must have list and later on realize, you know, I'm not enjoying my style because I cut out whatever, you know, this important thing to me, but I was in the middle of building and not really consciously making good decisions around, you know, how do I adjust my budget? So if you've got this list of must haves, nice to have, and your wish list, um, hopefully you'll be able to incorporate most of these, th these things in your bill. But if not, and budget becomes um, a concern and a constraint, at least you can make educated decisions um, as to how to adjust your budget. So for me, when I talk about my design and the things that were important for me, um, a, a couch, a comfortable couch, an entertaining space. My home had always been like the gathering space for my friends and family. So I wanted to be able to continue that in my tiny house. I didn't want to build a house that people didn't, other people didn't feel comfortable in visiting. Even though it was my house and I could have designed it, you know, just for myself, my thought process was I wanted to continue what um, was, what made home for me and what was part of my lifestyle. Um, for me, windows were important. I, I like to have a lot of light and sunshine in the house. Um, my closet, I wanted to have a uh, conventional style closet versus um, going into storage options that were kind of foreign and, and, and 
something for me would, would leave me um, disconjointed, I guess, for the most part. So, though, and, and my bathroom, I, and I, I, I've shared that, like I, this is when I had locks, so I would um, do my own lock maintenance. And so having the space to do my hair, having the counter space so that my jewelry and my perfumes and everything sat out on the counter. Again, those are the things that over the course of time, um, even before I went into designing my tiny house, after I sold my house and I would look for apartments, those were the things that I had uh, a list of actually on my cell phone. And that just kind of translated into my tiny house design. And so those are the things when I say know yourself, those are the things that you'll want to focus on. Um, are there some key pieces that you want to incorporate in your tiny house? And so um, I caution you in that, obviously, it's a smaller space and you don't want to, you know, start trying to pull in furniture from a, a conventional house and, and make it fit in a tiny house and take up space and, and not correctly utilize your space. But there are also ways to use furniture from a conventional home and adjust it to a tiny house. So if you will refer back to one of my the one of the conversations on intimate spaces, I had a conversation with AJ and China Rose and that was episode three. So refer back to episode three. Um, and there was a piece um, in their um, kitchen or dining space that was from China Rose's grandmother, I think it was, and they wanted to incorporate that in their space. And so they used, they adjusted it so that it was a part of the space and, and designed around it. So um, refer back to that video because it's possible. Um, but again, it takes, it's going to take some time and, and um, some thought to go into it so that you are, are figuring out the design and making these things work. Um, then the second piece of this is aesthetics. Um, and I, you know, I just kind of put aesthetics matter. So you've got to um, think about the flow of your house because as you're designing and you're incorporating all the things, you also want to make sure that the house flows and it, and it makes sense. Like you don't want to, my example, when I talk about how the house flows, you don't want um, your door, your, your door, your entrance to your home to come into your bathroom. Uh, like stepping, you know, stepping from the outside right into the bathroom. So these are the things that you have to think about. How I, I know the the components that I want to have in my design, but how do I put it all together um, so that it makes sense and, and it flows? Um, I also want to make sure that you are thinking about as you're designing on the inside is your window placement and, and the things that you're designing on the inside. You also have to consider the aesthetics on the outside. Um, and I'll kind of refer you back to as a kid, unless you're an artist. And I had a conversation with my friend Dominique Moody last night. and We were talking about artistry and she's act, she's a real, real artist. And so she was talking about her drawings and how she started at such an early age. And so we were talking about drawing houses because she's been drawing and designing houses since a young age. And so her houses that she was drawing at her young age were definitely nothing like my houses. So when I'm talking about the aesthetics matter, I want you to think about somebody who's not an artist, who's drawing a house at a young age and where you oftentimes end up with that great big old window in the front or um, a house that looks like a cyclops because, you know, you aren't a, an artist. And so when I, when I um, talk to aesthetics, this is one of the things that I share with people. So as you're working on the inside, make sure you're also thinking about what is this design going to look like on the outside? What is my window and door placement going to look like on the outside? Because you want to have the aesthetics that are flowing on the inside and the outside. And this is important um, too, if you're going to have to look for a location for your tiny house, and maybe you are are going to need to be on someone else's property um, in a backyard. And, and as we hope, you know, tiny houses move to being um, acceptable in conventional neighborhoods, and, and we'll hope that city officials allow that, um, what we want to be doing is making sure that um, the house is something that would be aesthetically pleasing for a neighborhood. So that is one of the reasons why um, you want to pay attention to what, not only what the house looks like on the inside, but what it's also going to look like on the outside. Um, this is also where you'll need to be thinking about um, maximizing your space, your aesthetics, you know, um, 
as I just spoke about, um, not necessarily trying to use all of your conventional um, furniture in a tiny house, adjusting if you want to use pieces, adjusting it so that it is multifunction in a tiny house, but just making sure that you're you're being cognizant of the fact that this is a small space. So you want to maximize the space as best as you can and have things that can perform multifunction um, um, things within within the house. So aesthetics, knowing yourself and then your aesthetics, that both of those are important. Um, and then the design tools. So there are one of the things that um, um, is available now that, that uh, maybe wasn't available, um, definitely wasn't available when I was building is the fact that there are so many tiny houses available for you to tour online. Um, so that you're not necessarily having to reinvent the wheel or figure things figure things out from ground zero. Refer to all of those tours, pick up tips and tricks um, from people who have figured things out. Some of their, their style and their um, design might be helpful to you. Um, if you refer to episodes one and two of the um, conversation on intimate spaces, Adika and um, Taisha both shared about their design and how they um, adjusted some of the things that their li their lifestyle, um, their work. So Taisha, um, uh, if you refer back to her episode, she does um, massage therapy. And so how um, her design is accommodating of um, reconfiguring her home so that she can um, sometimes have um, customers or clients inside her home. So those are the things, um, again, knowing yourself and your lifestyle and, and how you need your house to function um, that's important. And you have plenty of examples now online um, through all of the social media channels so that you're not having to to start from ground zero. Um, and then there's some other tools like SketchUp, which will give you some 3D modeling. Um, there's a tool I think called Revit um, that also is a 3D modeler. Um, if you ha are able to use AutoCAD, which I, th which I think is more like an advanced des design tool, but maybe you can um, figure that out and use it as well. Um, and then good old graph paper. Like I started my tiny house um, and, and as I talked to AJ and China Rose, um, they also had a picture of where they started their design from, you know, a good old piece of graph paper, which will help you get to scale. Um, a lot easier than um, if you're not necessarily in the design field. Um, graph paper will help you get to scale and figure out your design and, and give you an, an excellent starting point. Um, and then one of the things that I'll share, so if, if design and the creativity um, that goes into design really isn't your thing, um, that is is where I've, I've shared before in um, um, episodes one and three in the what's your question of um, series of of how to get started in tiny house placement. Consult the experts um, instead of spinning your wheels or not necessarily getting to a good design. Consult the experts. That's what they're there for. Um, again, you know, no shameless plug, but I I always say I offer consultations. I offer um, workshops. Um, there are other people who offer workshops and consultations. If you like someone's st style, reach out to them and ask them if they'd be willing to, you know, offer you a consultation. Um, there are a lot of people who sell plans. I also sell my plans. Um, maybe instead of starting from zero, you want to um, buy the plan, buy someone else's plans. If you're going to um, buy the plans, maybe there's some adjustments that you want to make to those plans. And so you'll buy the plans and kind of use them maybe as the basis and then work with your builder or work with an architect to adjust those plans. Um, if you are planning to bu um, buy a, an already made tiny house, um, someone, a builder's design, um, I always say, you know, it's not impossible to make those homes work for you, but if you know that you have some specific needs or a, a specific lifestyle that you need to accommodate in your tiny house, I would caution you um, to make sure you're either working with the builder um, and examining that design to make sure it will work for your lifestyle. Or maybe if you, you know, if you like that builder, working with him for a, a custom build that will accommodate your lifestyle because your design of your tiny house is almost one of those things, you know, outside of the function the the structure of your tiny house and making sure you have some like I think people say good bones making sure you have a, a really good um, structurally sound tiny house your design is probably the the next thing that is the most important um, for your tiny house 
So you want to make sure for your success. So you want to make sure that um, you are spending the time and making the sound decisions so that you end up with a good um, design. And I, I share um, some things ab about how I got to my design and the things that were important to me um, in my design, in my luxury living in a tiny house video. So I am going to be sharing all of the resources that I'm talking about in the video, in this um, video, in the description, so that you can refer to those things um, as you're considering your design. Um, and if you have any questions, um, again, I do offer opportunities for consultations and quick chats and those types of things to answer some of those questions and to help you um, along the journey. And hopefully um, this information will help you figure out your design and um, and help you get to a, a good design that helps you be successful for the long term in your tiny house, if that's your, your overall goal. All right. I, um, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Let me look at my notes to make sure I have. I talked about your must-haves, nice to have in your wish list and making sure you have that list in writing. Um, the aesthetic. So when I talk about it, when in um, episode three of the What's Your Question, when I talk about um, finding a location for your tiny house, kind of putting the location conversation, connecting it with design. One of the reasons that I have so many windows and I have windows all around the house. As I was building, I didn't know where I was going to place my house. So I wanted to make sure that I had um, enough windows so that depending, you know, once I got on site, then I would figure out how I would have to place my home on somebody's piece of property. And there would be no telling which way the light was going to come in, which way was going to be, you know, east for the sunrise, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to have enough windows so that no matter how I play, had to place my house on that property, that I'd have I would have enough um, opportunity for sunlight and natural light. So as I'm talking about placement and all the things that you have to think about as you're putting things together in your design, those are um, the things that that I'm saying that you have to consider and think through. Uh, let me see. I think I covered all of the things that I have on my notes. Um, anything that I've left out, I am going to put in the this um, the description of th for this video. I will provide the links to all of the videos and the resources that I've spoken about. And let's see. I'm going to check in the chat to see if there are any questions that anyone has that I might have missed or any questions that I, any additional questions that I might be able to answer. Good morning. Somebody says, did I make the live? You made, you actually made the live, April. Good morning. All right. Hello from DC. Good morning. Um, Tiffany says, I didn't even click on the video and this is what I need to hear right now because I'm looking for a tiny house. I'm glad that this this worked out for you this morning. This is a conversation you needed to have. So now you need to uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification so that you'll know when when content is, is uh, when I'm going live. I do this on every Sunday. So um, thank you for joining and make sure you're back next Sunday for uh, another conversation. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. All right, I am scrolling the chat to see if anyone has a question that I might answer. Good morning, Latasha. Latasha says she's late, but she's going to catch the replay. Thank you. And I, and I am going to, all of the, the items that I talked about here, um, I am going to ensure that I've added all of the resources in the um in the description for the video. Okay, Sandra does have a question. Does does the position of the electric water sewer hookup matter before you have a space to park? Um, no, not really. And as a standard, um, no, I won't say as a standard. So most of that, those connections are happening. People usually put them on the back of the house because they're not necessarily um, aesthetically pleasing, is or either the back of the house or the the side of the house. So wherever you're going to run your sewer to and connect to the electricity and your water, that is go you're 
obviously going to run it away from the house and you're going to be connecting to something off away from the house. Um, and you're going to be installing piping and you're going to be installing an electrical line. And so those lines are already long and they will be leading off away from the house. So no, um, it does that doesn't really matter. Um, you're Sometimes you might be coming from underneath the house, um, though there is a caution to not have too much up underneath the house. If that, you know, the house has to go down the road, you don't want to damage things that you're, you have underneath the house. So most, uh, as I'm saying, most of the, that, um, those hookups are either on the back of the house or kind of on the side. So no, that doesn't necessarily matter um, because you are going to still have to run lines and that's going to give you your distance um, for parking. Um, let's see. I am subscribed. Did you have to? Oh, thank you, Tiffany. I'm glad you subscribed. Did you have to buy land to build your tiny house first? Someone may have already asked. So, Tiffany, I am going to refer you to episode three. I love when I've already talked about something. I, I Episode three, where I talked about um, placement, where can you place a tiny house? So we talked about uh, I talked about that in detail of the option of, of buying land and how that works with a tiny house on wheels um, and how it works with a tiny house on foundation, because those are two different things and the options for land and, and those things are very different. So um, refer back to that video and you'll have, you'll be able to answer those questions. Uh, Michelle is asking a very similar question. Um, are you, have you ever, I think she's saying, are you, have you ever thought about buying your own piece of land? I talk about that in, um, that placement video to be, um, episode three of what's your question, because it's not as easy as buying your own piece of land and putting a tiny house on wheels on that piece of land. So, um, those questions, that conversation is, um, is that's talked about in that, in that video in detail of, of how that works. All right, so this one says, this is off topic, but I'd love to see women of color coming together to purchase land and build our tiny homes. It would be beautiful to see communities like this all over. Um, I would say it's happening. Um, I do know of uh, people who are trying to come together and build communities. Um, this is gonna be one of the things that people say, oh my God, you know, that's that's racist where you say communities of color. And I, again, I talk about this in the videos of why and placement of why this conversation is necessary as I have personally had to move my home twice because of dealing with racism in areas um, in an RV park as well as in a rural area. So the necessity of people of color, black people coming together in community is a matter of safety. Um, and so, you know, before anyone wants to have that conversation, we're not, we're not doing that. Um, because it is a necessity for safety. And so it is happening. Um, my cooperative communities, and again, I, I talk about this in detail in the placement, but the work that I have been doing with the cooperative communities is also um, kind of along that vein of helping um, us to be able to be in community and be, in, be able to have safe um, locations for our tiny houses. So I agree that that's um, important and uh, a beautiful opportunity. All right, let me see if there are any other questions. We might have a early day today. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Denise. All right. I don't see any other questions. I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes. Uh, Latasha says, I would love to get a lot within a tiny house community. Um, I will share, a, I can, let me make a note cause I'll forget. Um, I will share a link. Um, I'm going to share a link to my cooperative communities initiative. And then I'll also, um, share a link of some tiny house communities that I'm aware of that if you want to investigate those, um, throughout the country, I'll share that link. Um, and you can, um, can find that information. Um, Latasha is asking, are there many communities within North Carolina? There are a few, not, I won't say many, but there are a few. So I will, um, share that information. 
So Sonia is asking, did you use a specific software to assist in designing your home that you can suggest? Um, I wonder if I can, um, I'm going to see if I can get to that file um, while we're talking. So I, um, while I was designing my house, um, I, my sister was helping me and my sister is um, an interior designer. So um, she, we were actually using, or she was using AutoCAD to um, put my, the actual plan together for um, my tiny house. And so um, that, you know, that was a professional tool and I cannot say that I know how to use it, but that's one of the things that she was using. And so while I'm, ta while I'm talking, I'm gonna try to see if I can find my file. Um, and then the other thing um, that we used was SketchUp, which was what I was saying about the 3D modeling. And it was so beneficial because I um, am definitely a, um, a visual person. And so um, the SketchUp for me was really good because it allowed me to know what my tiny house was going to look like before um, it was even built. And um, that was totally something um, that I knew um, once we started building my house, I had um, known what my house was going to look like um, from the beginning based on SketchUp um, and having the opportunity to see this 3D modeling. And my house is so... Um, so close to let's see if it's opening um to what the what sketchup presented and it was one of the things that really helped me as um i was going through the process in understanding the space and how i needed to use my space and um i can't get the file to open um uh, oh here we go i mean bear with me let me use my technology over here you all are testing my um my technology skills over here this morning okay there we go um so this is um sketchup and uh let's see this is one of the versions of sketchup that i had um some of the renderings for my tiny house so um this was I don't know if this was like version two or three. I think this was two. So this was my uh, initial bathroom rendering. Uh, we ended up moving the window over here on the left-hand side behind the toilet, but this is very um, much what my bathroom bathroom looks like um, today. Um, this is my loft over on the right-hand side is my loft um, and the little rendering of, of a person sitting there. So that, you know, that was me. My loft looks, um, exactly like that. Um, my closet, when we were working on figuring out um, my closet design. And then um, this is, so the one on the left here is kind of, is looking from the master loft down into um, overhead, I guess. Oh, overhead of the seating space. But the one on the right is coming into the house, my windows and going into the kitchen. Um, and if I compare these to the actual pictures that I have now of my tiny house, the, you know, this was so spot on. Um, and so this for me um, was one of the things that really helped me um, it, as I was envisioning and um, working towards pulling my money together for my tiny house. These were the things that kind of kept me motivated as well as helped me understand um, how my design um Front in a, in the three D perspective, and um, and it is so. Um, I don't if you followed my journey from the beginning. I in the beginning I had um, across from the kitchen. I had a little nook here with a table and a fold up uh, well, a fold up table and chair. And so this was like I said exactly how um, my house. This was exactly how my design um, ended up um, or or my build ended up. I should say. And what happened was this was from coming from the CAD, AutoCAD. Um, they were, uh, my sister and a, a friend, Jamie, were able to translate the design into um, SketchUp from AutoCAD so that it was 
um, the exact renderings of what my tiny house, um, my actual design. So yes, though that's one of the tools um, and I highly recommend it because it was so helpful to me in um, envisioning my space and um, and I highly suggest it for anyone that um, to use um, for anyone in their design process. All right, let's see. I have some more questions here. Uh, let's see, let's see, uh, let's see. Um, I did answer the question about the software. You're welcome, Sonia. Um, um, someone is asking about retirement in Panama. What's your experience with tiny houses abroad or finding land? Um, Panama is on my list as well. I can't speak to fi the finding land um, experience in um, abroad or in Panama. I will say there is a um, Black Expats group for Panama um, on Facebook. My friend Charlotte um, um, runs that group, so I would say get connected with that group. She and I have talked about tiny houses um, abroad. One of the things, things that I will say, um, you know, Tiny houses um, in those countries is, is not a foreign concept to them. They already live in small spaces. A, a lot of them already live in small spaces. So it is something that they're used to. I can't speak to the process, but I do know it is um, tiny houses. It's a consideration as people are moving, leaving the U.S. and they consider that for um, other countries. Um, one of my concerns is, um, and I'll I'll try to say it is, as thoughtfully as process, pro possible is I don't want to be a, a gentrifier, I guess is, is the best way to say it when I go to um, someone else's country. So I'm always, um, as I'm talking about that with Charlotte, those are one of the things that we talk about in the, the consideration of how we move to other countries and what that looks like in buying land and taking up space there. Um, all right, let's see. Sonia, I think, is saying that she's familiar with AutoCAD and SketchUp. Um, I use it in woodworking, and I'm in the beginning stages of designing. Um, I'm looking to get an idea of out-of-pocket costs. The software will help with materialists. Absolutely. Um, and out-of-pocket costs right now is, is really important because um, we, uh, with the um, supply chain issues right now, it is um, one of the the challenges for building right now. Um, Tiffany says, very nice. I remember seeing you on Tiny House Nation. I was on Tiny House Big Living, um, but it was, a, it was a show. It was it just wasn't Tiny House Nation. So I was on HGTV on their side, which was Tiny House Big Living. And we did share um, some of the, the um, sketch ups in that in the episode. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> Sonia is saying a great visual to work towards. I know your home and this is exemplary, is exemplary of it. Absolutely. Um, I had known what my house was going to look like from from the very beginning. And I often said that in building it, if um, the build had not translated to the plans, I was going to be very disappointed. Like if it had somehow gotten off um, in the, the, the handoff to the builder, I was going to be very disappointed. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, you're welcome, Sonia. Um, yeah, SketchUp was very valuable. Uh, let's see. Hello, I think you've mentioned before that you plan to start growing some food. Would be good, great to hear more about that with the space you have inside and outside. Thank you. Um, I, I try to stay in my lane of expertise and I will not ever be the, the expert on growing food. Um, whatever I do is probably is, is going to be just uh, me taking some some chances. So I probably will not talk about it here. I might talk about it on social media, but I try to stay in my lane of what I know um, in, and where I feel like my areas of expertise are. But there are plenty of people um, that I would suggest that you um, um, follow. Pharmacy, um, um, Green, oh my God, why can't I think of, of her channel? Um, Green Heifer Farms. Um, there are so many Black women um, that are in this movement of growing food and, and are, far, are, are real farmers. So those are the people that I'm going to suggest that you follow for some expert advice. I try to stay in the, on my tiny house lane. So the stuff that I know how to talk about. Um, all right. 
Here's a question. Does having the bedroom on the bottom floor versus loft style take up too much valuable space? No, absolutely not. This is that's, again, one of the things that as you're designing what's important to you, um, you design it. So you figure out how to if, if the bedroom on the on the first floor is important to you versus the loft design around that. Um, and again, where I said um, there are so many homes on um, YouTube that you can follow. There are a lot of great first floor designs with bedrooms um, now that um, you would be able to get some examples of how people have done this and, and done it successfully. So if that is important to you, um, what, so here's one of the things that I'll say, um, kind of with the, the must have, nice to have wish list. Um, as you're in the build process, as you're stressed out, it's very easy to make decisions and say, okay, well, I won't do this because money is short, or um, maybe the builder is suggesting that you do something different based on whatever his ideas are. Um, that is where I say the must-haves, nice-to-have, wish list, and knowing yourself is important because you don't want to make decisions based on somebody else's thought process of how they think things should be, you know, a builder who really doesn't know you and your space, or Again, because money is tight. Um, and then later on, you know, a, a six months down the line, as things have settled and you're in your house and you realize, I don't really like this space because I would have preferred to have blah, 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 you know, my bedroom on the first floor. And then somebody talked me into doing something different. Those are things that are going to be really important um, to you when the dust settles and why it is important for you to know um know yourself and to know what's important to you for your design so that you are designing your house accordingly. So um, that that is not something that um, takes up too much valuable space. You would just need to figure out how to design it so that you can incorporate, you know, other things around that first, first floor bedroom. Um, but make sure your home is true um, to you. Um, oh, thank you. I'm glad Charlotte did refer you. Thank you for um, for let me know that. Thank you. Um, she and I have had conversations. Panama is on my list um, for one of the places that I want to live at least part time. So she and I are, are in constant conversation. All right. I think I am at the end. I don't see any other questions. Um, again, this is a key piece of your um, tiny house journey, your design. And so I hope that you will um, invest the time in making sure that you pay attention to this. And um, as someone said on, on um, Facebook, as I was talking about this, they were saying, you know, this is kind of the, the piece that can make you or break you. And so you want to be sure that you're focused on, um, on good design and design that works for, for you and your needs. Um, okay, so again, this is this has been the what's your question portion of the creating home a tiny house series um, content that I am creating. Um, and again, I am here every Sunday at 12 noon, um, alternating Sundays. So um, next Sunday will be conversations on intimate spaces. Um, and then the Sunday after that, we'll be back to um, what's your question? Um, and so I thank you. <laughs> I'm laughing because Crystal said, y'all need to listen to Miss Jewel. So Crystal is in one of my workshops. Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm going to put that as one of my testimonials on my website. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> um, this is, um, content again that I am, adding on Sundays. I appreciate you all spending your Sundays with me. Um, be sure to come back for the conversations on intimate spaces because that's where others in the movement um, are sharing their journeys and their experiences and how they got to Tiny and the things that um, uh, influenced them along their journey. And it's always something that you can relate to. And it's it's often the, one of those Sunday experiences that I'm, I'm enjoying as I'm having those conversations with them. So um, if this video was helpful to you, I will um, ask you to, um, to um, let me make sure I get all my points. Like the channel, subscribe to the channel, um, 
um, subscribe to the notification so that you'll know when I'm adding content and then share the content. If you found this helpful, please be sure to share the content so that others can um, benefit from it as well. And so thank you. Love your lipstick. This is, um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is one of my, I think this is one of my um, 50 things because I've ne I would never, 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 never um, prior to my 50s um, wear some some red lipstick. So this is one of my um, when you get grown and and I would ac actually say my um, ball journey is encouraging me to kind of do all the things. So I thank you for that. Um, I, I'm venturing out on um some some things here so yes crystal thank you i'm crystal is my hype person this morning like subscribe turn on the bell share my videos thank you crystal for being my hype person this morning um i appreciate you always and thank you for being here so you all have a great sunday oh thank you sonia uh, you all love my lipstick i think it's it's lip bar i think it's boss some something boss um so yes thank you i appreciate you all have a great Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Join us um, next Sunday for Conversations on Intimate Spaces. And I, um, I thank you all again for joining me this morning. Take care.